Welcome to Strange Tales from Outer Space, Guys, Season 2, and I'm blowing your eardrums out already. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, need hearing aids. What is nah, this? You don't need hearing aids. <laughs> Guys. Hmm? Guys, look look around. Where where, where are we? <laughs> we are in a new era, which is actually quite surprisingly fitting. <laughs> What's going on? Where's I... all the blue stuff? <laughs> That was the past, man. Yeah, past. Get, get get to the present, Brohim. <laughs> I mean, if you listen to the audio podcast of this, uh, pretend that the whole world, like uh, like that scene from Wizard of Oz, when she finally enters in Oz and everything just comes into Technicolor for the first time. Someday I'll wish upon a star. <laughs> so welcome, everybody, <laughs> for, to, to Strange too. Tales from Outer Space. How are you guys doing? Um, <laughs> Doc, how was your week not talking about Wizard of Oz? <laughs> um, I've been a Wizard of Oz kid because of the little one. My last two weeks I've been doing family stuff, so I've been taking care of that and taking care of our brand new layout, uh, which incidentally came into hearing a special announcement, which we'll get into in just a little bit. I have been super busy in game. I got my full set of PvP purples, everything done. I'm halfway done on yet on the attunement for that and killing everybody I can. So I'm almost completely maxed out on PvP purples. 90% uh, done on my attunement in general. I should have been done. I should have been done. 91%. I have every <laughs> single world boss done except for Zoetic and Wild Run because he's bugged out on me three times. He, I've killed him three times. No achievement credit, so no world boss attunement credit. Ha! Which ha! sucks. The goal was to be attuned ready to play this year for for rating and now because of zoetic i failed this year it's oh you, a, a new you, year <laughs> I, was about to say, oh, like, I was like you have a long time to go I yeah i if, wanted i wanted to be raid ready, ready by the by the by the first of june when the game technically is about to launch oh oh oh, oh as in as in the games one year gotcha i'm with you now so oh. unfortunately i can't i can't do that everyone else has beat me to it zoetic bugged out I wanted to give a shout out real fast to Magma Volcano from Perseus Vale. Uh, they and I had a really cool talk last night, um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to them. And uh, my week was far more family oriented to that, but we have a lot to talk about. So enough about me. Indigo, how was your week this week? Uh, my week was awesome. I uh, I I've been doing a ton of PvP, but uh, I actually and all three of us, unless uh, Krug manages to get uh, kicked out, are all official members. Uh, Black Dagger Society. Oh, I was like, get kicked out of what are you talking about? Uh, yeah. Yeah, good yeah. times. So, um, been doing that, and, uh, you know, we've been doing a bunch of world bosses. Uh, I'm still working on my adventure attunement on my, uh, stalker, but we've been getting it slowly but surely. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. I, I'm awesome. I'm excited. That was very yeah, sure you are. I'm awesome, that's, guys. That's not a Freudian slip at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Krug, what about you? How was your week? My week was wonderful. Uh, I discovered a huge problem with the way that I play Wildstar, like on a fundamental level. Uh, so I used this add-on. It's called Gear. Uh, wait, I used wait. So when you use the keys, you don't use these two to turn your character. <laughs> you use the mouse. All right, I'm fucking done. I'm just here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Strange Hill Season 2. <laughs> <laughs> now with Let's Krug, yay! Uh, so I use this add-on called Gear. Gear was a great add-on, but I did not use it correctly, and in doing so, I may have salvaged half of most of the gear that I use to play the game. Oh, so man. the only full set of gear I have at the moment is a PvP set. My PvE <sighs> DPS set is like half is what it should be, <laughs> and my PvP uh, healing set is half of what it should be, and my PvE healing set is like I only have a helmet. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about why I fucked that up, because it would take a long time, but um, it was not the add-on's fault, it was totally my fault. The worst and... part is you can't put a ticket in for that, because you did it yourself. I know! It's basically <laughs> like, hey, can I put in a ticket for me being dumb, and you just give me my gear back, like, reset my gear back oh, to, like, what I it was. I might start like, crying from laughter. A couple that... weeks ago. So, that was a little disappointing. So, I've been, like, farming, basically, is what I've been doing. Like, that, that's that been my whole week uh so yeah that was pretty fun um that was my week <laughs> what about you chat box hey look at that the chat box is big enough for you can see everybody now. <laughs> although we do have to work on the way that looks a little bit like that background yeah, should be that's that's called that's called after the show yeah there you go <laughs> after the show so yes the start of season two technically we didn't actually take sprinkles a break yes all. my bed is messy all right punk jeez yeah. I always forget to do that before we start streaming. Anyway, sorry, I'm done. <laughs> no, Lashing out at our audience. Rawr. 
Wow, what a great way to be nice to them. They have supported us the entire time. They're yeah, it's not a cool thing like that or, or like my background, which is full of like figurines and posters and shit. Anyway, we have a super big cast. And uh for people that are listening to the audio portion of the podcast, we're gonna I'm going to give you a timestamp of when you can jump into the uh, post free to play talk if you'd like to skip that. So we're gonna go right into it. We're going free to play. No, we're I'm not. selling myself no. off right now. There. Uh, no, no, we're not. No, not, no. Not us. that's a rumor, actually. Uh, so what happened is um, someone no, posted on on Reddit, no. and it wasn't oh, actually an employee. I, I can't, it was can't can't no stop. No, oh, damn it. oh, did it not? Actually... No, never mind. Oh wait, wait, wasn't Doc <laughs> supposed to take his shirt off when? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, here we go. <laughs> we'll have a special non-Twitch uh, for okay. that. Like, we'll have well, because we still need TOS, uh, I, I will bear my shoulders. So, Please don't. yeah. No. Uh, no, but officially, yeah. we got news on Thursday that Wildstar is going free-to-play. Not buy-to-play, free-to-play. Free-to-play. Which confused me, by the way. Why would it confuse you? Well, I, I mean, you have all of the, the box sales, and you, you've, you've clearly... Technically, the game had two forms of barriers. It had the box purchase, and then it had the uh, monthly subscription barrier, right? Which, yeah. technically, you could get away the monthly subscription barrier by using cred if you can get up, if you can grind the game enough. So, there that existed. Uh, so, it was weird to me that instead of going, all right, like when you fix, like when you go and fix something, you don't make two changes at the same time to find out, and then you're like, oh, it fixed it, but which one of these two fixed it? Like, they made two separate um, changes. They, 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 they got rid of the subscription, and then they also got rid of the box sales. Uh, yeah. I know that um, Pappy came out and said why he did, why they were doing that, or was it Donatelli? I can't remember. It was both. Then they both went, they both had an interview with MMORPG, and they also reiterated why they decided to help take the game to free to play status on yep. the live stream as well. Mm -hmm. And they fully do admit, as much as they really wanted to put their efforts behind the subscription model, they were wrong. Uh, and uh, I know people in chat, people who are listening to me going, yeah, you guys were also wrong too because you were like, no, this game can never go free to play. It'll never survive or it'll, you'll just think it never will in the first place. I admit, I was wrong. I didn't think it'd go free to play this year. I'm cool with being wrong and I want to see what happens from here on out. So I just want to say that too. Yep. No, 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 no. Remember what we did say? We did say if it does go free to play, just make sure it's after the time in which ESO went free to play, so that yes. we can be like, so we beat you, oh, ESO. we beat you, <laughs> the ESO. ESO podcast. <laughs> 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 and then someone's out there going, no, they're just more progressive. Ah. Anyways, <laughs> but no space taco truck for free to play subscribers. None. If you, lapse your, <laughs> if, you, if you lapse any part of your subscription, no space taco truck. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's let's get into the free to play stuff. There, there is a ton to get over, and and there's a ton that we can be talking about. So, yes, we're going free to play. We're no longer doing uh, subscriptions, and we're no longer doing uh, boxes. There will be a subscription based option on top, so that you can gain additional perks, you can get additional boosts in XP, uh, you get uh, a form of loyalty points, all of this in which we're going to go into detail um, afterwards. But so for those of you who um, who uh, are subscribing now, stay subscribed. Just, just trust me. <laughs> it's, it's worth it. Nothing's actually changing for you. And in fact, most of the game isn't going to change at all. Cred literally is staying exactly the same. You can farm up for cred, you can still get it, it'll give you game time, well, it'll give you signature game time. They're now calling what we call a subscription service now a signature membership. It's still optional, completely optional. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 15 bucks a month still. Buying cred is still 20 bucks a month. You can put it on the market as you wish, use it for yourself. Uh, there are other benefits for that, we'll tell you in a little bit. Uh, a lot of this is going to be rehashed from the live stream and what we do know from the uh, the flight uh, from the um, the announcement on Thursday. So one thing that is happening, there's a, B a PTR beta. If you haven't heard this already, if you haven't seen it already, you can actually sign up for the PTR beta, and they actually have a, f a free to play announcement trailer as well. Oh yeah, huh? We got something sexy and new too. Ooh! You're welcome, guys. Uh. I'm not totally horrible at this art stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So if you pay attention to all the little things in the pizza, in the free to play announcement, uh, there's a DJ Rousey, which I really really want now. Really really want. 
<laughs> so yes, you can sign up for beta, uh, but um, I wanted to talk about this. This is something that we're going to go into a little bit later. So uh, with the free to play and the subscription stuff, you can only be a part of betas. Or, I'm sorry, not betas. I apologize. In uh, never mind, never mind. I'm you, stupid. What? Did what? you just have a stroke on yeah, really? like Did live you? stroke? <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Start really that curious. Over. Let's start that over. <laughs> Right now, everyone has PTR. It's closed for the moment. You yes, can go and PTR sign up for is what PTR I was talking about. Oh, right now. please do. Either you're new, you're returning, or currently subscribed. Well, Just no. Please. What I was what I was gonna say is, <laughs> if you go it, once the game starts, um, free to play users will not get uh, PTR access. Right. That's very true. Is right. what I was trying to say, but then I realized that beta and PTR are two completely different things. Right. Yes. So beta is there's a PTR for the beta of free to play, and then there's the PTR for the game like development cycle. Once it transitions. So, I want to stop and talk about We are the, confusing this really hard for them. N no, it's fairly simple. Okay. The, anyways, uh, I it, regardless, the the part I want to focus on is that um, free to play users won't have access to PTR for the game, which is silly, isn't it? Like we had a short conversation about this a, a while ago and we kind of came to the conclusion that um, it, I mean, PTR is about testing the game, and one of the tests that you need to do is test how it stress. reacts to volume. Yeah, a stress test. So I, I don't understand what they gain by limiting the number of people that go into the PTR. Like, I, I see that they want to, like, oh, yeah, you get an exclusive first look at the content, but that's not what that server's for. That server's for testing the content to make sure it's yeah, not it's broken. A, it's a little different from beta last year when we were literally stress testing the game. You can only get on by, you know, trying to get the game. Now, you really do... We don't, we need, we don't need to stress test Blighthaven. We don't need to stress test Starcom Basin. We need to test out all of these new free options that are coming. So um, I I was on I was on uh, Wildcast this week, mm -hmm. and we had this exact same conversation. So um, the difference is is it's not a stress test that's the concern is, it's the pure population. So let's say okay, hundred percent of of subscribers now currently have access to PTR, right? Yeah. So we look at let's go the free to play uh, model. Let's say fifty percent of the people are free to play. 50 that's generous. I know I'm being very generous, and you'll understand my point. 50% of people are free to play, 50% of people are signature players, okay? Only 50% of the overall population will have access to PTR. And then only a small percentage of those people are actually going to go in. Let's say 10% of them are actually going to go into that. And that itself is also extremely, extremely forgiving as well. So you're yeah. not getting as many people in game to test new things. So for example, it's not stress test. It's testing to make sure things aren't buggy, to make sure that when an Esper goes up to this, uh, to this character and clicks on them it does the exact same when a spell slinger a warrior when every, right, right and right. so the more people in there the more people in ptr the more things can be tested again it doesn't have to be a stress test now the guys you're right so the more people you have in ptr the more use cases you get like the chances that any one of those people will do something unique is higher when there are more people yeah. Uh, and so I think that's really important. Now, I have a lot of people, not a lot of people, somebody in chat, uh, your own fear said um, that PTR was, oh, I'm sorry, Chestnut said PTR was always dead when I was on it. Yeah, there it were was. lots of times where PTR was completely empty, but there were times when PTR was, like, thriving. There were, like, we've been in PTR uh, server, we've been in the PTR server when there have been, like, a ton of people in it. Like we've seen that before. And, and again, I, I want to reiterate, it doesn't matter. There could be like one other person on PTR other than yourself. But the thing is, is that you are doing a unique form of actions that is equal to numbers and letters um, in the game on the back end. And it is causing errors because it's communicating differently by you. By you walking straight forward or you walking around and back to the same area are different accesses and different numbers that, that cause it. So... The more Very simplified, but yeah, yeah, that, it, it totally makes sense. And there'll also be benefits of being on the PTR that tie into a signature account. So. Well, well, the thing uh, about um, being on, and this is what the guys over at Wildcast were saying, is that, well, while signature players get access to PTR, they also are getting access to the new builds for each class. So, for example, um, I'm a stalker. I go into the game and. Um, I test out my stalker abilities and I realize that there is a substantial change or there's amp changes or amp fixes or uh, uh, um, level adjustments. 
with that information, I'm able to go straight into live knowing all of this information, while someone that doesn't have PTR access has to do that. Those same it's pay to win. Oh, sorry. <laughs> have to, have I'm to, getting rid of that phrase. <laughs> have, that phrase. Not that. have to now the people that that don't have PTR access have to wait until the game releases or hope that someone that's on PTR make points out these this information and creates content so that people can view it. It could be point, us. Point, point, point. But point? I, I, I'm, <laughs> that was that was just the the thought process of why PTR didn't have um, that was only signature. Yeah, it, I, it strikes me as odd, but I, I see why they would do it. But let's move on because we got a lot of stuff to cover. Yes, we do. So in the live stream and in everything else, they are stressing, guys, this is not pay to win because we are breaking down the barrier to free to play. We are not going to put any items that in any way, shape, or form will allow power creep to set in or allow people to have a significant edge over other players. Uh, some people will translate free to play to being anything against anybody an advantage, but it, free to play specifically is something that gives you a distinct power advantage against other players. And XP ex experience gain and money gain isn't really that. Uh, so don't worry too much about it. You mostly the co the cosmetic stuff's going free to play. So mounts gonna go free to play or for sorry, pay stuff, cash stuff. Mounts are going cash shop. Pets going cash shop. Costumes, experience pots, you know, trasmats, everything else like that. Uh, it, it's the best part is that they've allowed this cash shop option. People that want to spend the money, and they allow people that don't want to spend any money at all the opportunity to still get all of those items. And with the new currency, two new currencies. Yeah. One for the pay. One for the non-pay. I Omni bits for non-pay, end coin for the pay. I uh, too, too, too many too many form. currencies too, too many, many currencies. too many currencies right way too many currencies we have right now for dungeons we have um, glory glory for advanced dungeons and raids uh -huh. we have elder prestige gems. for PvP we have elder uh -huh. gems for post leveling uh -huh. we have uh, contract points for contract points we have gold for gold uh -huh. now we have omni bits for people that want to pay money end coin mm -hmm. for money and then also loyalty points that's so many currencies and that it sounds way kind too of long. That I took can't sound right, but it is. That was like two minutes of fucking talking about what currencies we had. What if the actual world worked that way? We'd be fucking screwed. Well, it does, but yeah, that's oh, yeah, world, but more specific worldwide. <laughs> these two specific currencies are thus: end coin is when you're actually going to spend physical money in your game for your game to unlock stuff. Omni bits are going to be the free to play or the free equivalent of that. Every time you're going to kill things uh, and possibly even quest rewards, you'll hopefully get a drop of Omni Bits. Obviously, you're not going to unlock everything as fast as if you would with Endcoin, but you, you can save up those Omni Bits and still buy just about everything in the cash shop and, with, uh, with Omni Bits instead of Endcoin. You literally can still play this game and get almost everything you want for absolutely free. And it does even more to that. Time. Lots All you need is time. Time. <laughs> time, a little bit of luck, some some willingness to do it. So don't be freaking out going, they're going to just make sure we can't do anything fun. It's not SWOTOR. You're not blocked out of that. We're going to get to that in a little bit, too. So what yeah. happens to people when the transition happens to the subs? Well, cool. I, what I was going to talk about is um, to give people an example of how the Omni Bits and the end coins are working is uh, think of how Smite does their currency. Where they have uh, coins. Any MOBA, really? Huh? No, not all MOBAs. Or I guess you could just say most MOBAs. Any, almost any MOBA. Yeah. So, yeah, Smite has uh, coins and then gems. They're and not coins. They're, it's what's it called? Favor. Favor. You have favor. Uh, you have favor, which you get by logging on, oh. playing games, and then uh, you have you have the gems, which you can buy things with both. Uh, but it requires significantly less gems than it does favor, so on and so forth. Are you logging on to Smite right now? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you got a big cast to do and a lot of stuff yeah, talking. You are not getting on to Smite right now. I was just con <laughs> confirming we weren't saying the wrong words. So so before we go on, um, I also wanted to point out the thing that's uh, currently being shown right now is actually the uh, Wildstar uh, YouTube video, free-to-play free, free -to YouTube video, which is actually really, really entertaining. And there is a ton of Easter eggs. I mean, a ton of Easter eggs in them. Which we'll also go over some of them. Yes. Uh, all right, sorry, keep going, Doc. So everyone's going, okay, what's going to happen when, when the transition happens? Don't we get some kind of deal if we're subscribed already? It, I have a bit of an 
issue with that, and I'll go with, into that eventually, you get towards the end of this, but if you are currently subscribed, and if you decide to subscribe by the 15th, you get a few kickback items. If you have been subbed since day one, which is June 3rd, 2014, and currently, currently, take that with a grain of salt, currently, have never had lapsed time in your account, meaning you've constantly kept up with cred, you've constantly kept it up with paying a monthly fee, or anything else, game time card, you will get two specific items. A title called The Living Legend! And you will also get an Ichthian themed bug mount. The crawler mount. Ichthian crawler mount. Yeah, which is super crawler. cool. Which is currently on screen right now. Uh, it looks huge, by the way. It's Which massive! Awesome. Check out where the seat is! That's awesome. not a mount! That's not a mount! That's a cockpit! <laughs> <laughs> it's a cockpit! That thing is massive! Yeah, it looks great. I'm, I'm totally Get like three wheels in front of the that. contract board? That's it! We're done! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> contract board or in the uh, crafting zone, you're just like, screw this, I'm Oh out. god! <laughs> if you can crawl around in front of the bank, it's just like mammoths and wow! God, but, please don't do that, guys! Please don't! Okay, so this is my thought. This is my thought. I think it's as tall... Again, this is pure speculation. I think it's as tall as a uh, war pig, but as wide and as round as the uh, Snarfalynx. Honestly, I think it's almost as big as the, the Ichthian Primes. The Ichthian Primes are, it's like maybe, it's gotta be like half the size of an Ichthian Prime. So, that, that Clover, in, in chat, Clover says, bigger than the Snarflings K? Question mark? And Kadium's response is, yes in all Definitely caps. Definitely, looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's but, probably gonna be pretty big. <laughs> yeah, that's people that have been subscribed since June 3rd. Everyone that's subscribed currently, uh, so anyone I, that subscribes, I'm getting it. Krug, Krug, are you getting it? Getting what? The the mount and all the other stuff. Oh, oh yeah, no. I've been subscribed the whole time. Oh yeah, Doc, what about yourself? I might not because I had a security <laughs> card, a security breach <laughs> on my card, so <laughs> technically speaking, I might be twelve hours of lapse. So whatever, it happens. So, oh, but so instead the, of getting if anybody that subscribes currently and subscribes before June fifteenth, let me continue. <laughs> sure, no, 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 go for it. <laughs> you get some other cool items. Everyone that is subscribed is getting the DJ Caretaker mount that is in the free to play video. Mount? Everyone's not a also. Mount. Not a mount. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, 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 think before I've words. I've mounts. I want the fuck. Yes. You, <laughs> you just, you you just, you just wrap your arms around the, the caretaker and you, you, you piggyback on him. And that's, <laughs> take me everywhere. <laughs> ah. that's you funny. also get a Disco Snogla companion pet. Which, you get that brand new housing track that's in the free to play announcement. Mm -hmm. Which I want you to explain yeah. the disco mm -hmm. uh, uh, snail uh, in lore. Do it. Go for it. Come on, lore hound. Do it. Make it real. <laughs> there was one. There was one very bored Chua. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming Mondo Zax just had a very lonely night. No one came to his party, so he said, "Fuck it," and just stuck a snail to the to the, to the ceiling and let it just spin around in circles. That's all I got right now. <laughs> You also get the Nexus Loyalist title, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much most of what all you get. It's a kickback, guys. We don't, we didn't really need to get anything. Wildstar said, "Hey, everyone that's been with us this long, thank you for the transition. We hope you transition with us into free to play. Here's some stuff from us to you that we just wanted to give you a token of our appreciation." People already on the subreddit and the forums and on Twitter have been saying, hey guys, um, I have an issue with my account, or before I have been out for like a day, or two, three, four days, uh, do I, can I petition for the Ichthian mount? So far, Donatelli has been saying on the live stream, no. There is no lapse in time. If you lapse it at all, you do not get the mount. And yeah, it sounds kind of rough. I can, I can see where people that have had a lapse in an account of like a week can petition for it. But people who say, no, guys, I let my la my account last back in November, and I'm going to resubscribe in, like, October. Can I still get the mount? I need the mount. Give me the mount. Why aren't you giving me the mount? You suck. No. If you legitimately let your account lapse, you have no goddamn right to, to ask for it. You really don't. And that's what, that's what bugs me about it. it it's the same thing I've said before. It's, it bugs me when people feel that sense of entitlement. I, I, I don't get why you have to get shiny things just because. My five-year-old, when I say, no, you don't get candy... Doesn't say, wah, wah. well, she does sometimes. But most times, she's, <laughs> yeah, that's not true at all. I've most of the time, that. she's okay with it. She's like, okay, daddy, I understand. So, okay. guys, can you please be better than a five year old? <laughs> so, I, I would like to go over some of the differences between, uh, like, of, of what's happening with free to play. Because um, if you are currently subscribed and you do change uh, to free to play, there will be some changes. Uh, and 
if a Chrome wants to work properly, let's see, eh, maybe, um, we can actually show you some of the changes that uh, has happened. So uh, your character slots, if you are free to play, you only get two character slots. Um, you also only get four costume slots, two banks, uh, personal bank slots, and only a thousand uh, total housing decor items um, for, for placement in your house. Now, before you freak out, some of those are pretty severe at first glance. Now, I kind of agree. It's really yeah. severe at first glance. I mean, and the only thing that I'm really Omni against bits. is the character slots one. Hold on, hold on. But that's, there's but something... that's easily rectified. Hold on, there's something I need to, to share with those people. Share with if those you people. bought a box, not a physical copy of the box, but a digital version of the Either game, one. or you won a box from QTimes.com, uh, you uh, actually will stay to 12 character slots, six costume slots, five personal bank slots, and 2,000 total decor items placed. So, for those... So, who, basically, like now. Yeah, exactly. So... If you just wait until the game starts on free to play and join on free to play, you are significantly limited than if you uh, have a box or start subscribing and playing now. So if you're thinking about getting into the game, I, I honestly suggest starting playing now and play it subbed for a couple months. You know, we're suspecting that it's going to be, you know, four months or so before the game actually flips over. They, they haven't given us an official date. They just said um, uh, spring, fall. Winter? I don't know. One of those. Uh, <laughs> other things. Other things that are changing. Let me scroll further down. Um, Look, there's a lot of it. Th there we'll is. The and, big points. And we're not going to. Yeah, absolutely. We're not going to. Uh, I do want to mention the, the, the crafting stuff. So you get no bonuses. The crafting stuff is, is a big difference. Yeah. So uh, if you're free to play, there's no change for you. Uh, for the boards, but if you do have a uh, if you, signature experience, a signature experience. Thank you. You have a minus fifteen overcharge risk, which means you can overcharge your stuff a little bit stronger than everyone you can else. Push it, push so, it real good. So hold on, guys. I have a question about this. If you are a crafter and you have this, would you consider this to be play, pay to win? Because technically, you're now getting stronger equipment than everyone else. I mean, it's pay to be better, but I don't think it's pay to win. No. Like, you'd still have to go out. So, e let's say I'm a weaponsmith. I could make a better weapon than you could make me a better weapon, but uh, I'd still have to go out and find other crafters to help finish my set of gear. So, I mean, it's you still have to give them money. You still have to... It's it's and not then, the be-all, end-all of... No, of no, and, and, and people that are, you can still place winning. them on the auction house, so you are able to <clears throat> put better quality gear out there. And, and and you as a free to play are you are allowed to uh, purchase that equipment. Mm -hmm. so and overcharge is not something that uh, that's guaranteed. It's just a, a little easier leeway to get that thing done. If you mess up, you mess up, and everything's destroyed. That's true. There's still the risk of failure, Man, regardless. Lucky. Yeah. The potential um, risk of failure, regardless. You earn an additional twenty five uh, percent in extra currency, which I think is awesome. Uh, ten percent uh, bonus material proc chance. Oh, and I I'm gonna agree with everybody in chat who's saying, uh, fifteen percent overcharge isn't gonna matter on crafted gear. Game, the rest of the gear in the game is still gonna be way better. Which yes, that's probably still gonna be true. <laughs> and here's the thing: we're talking about the fifteen percent overcharge. That seems to be much more beneficial than a ten percent target radius size. Whoop de freaking do. <laughs> um, that extra ten percent don't mean jack shit. I'm just saying. Holiday events. You also ad ad earn an additional twenty five percent extra currency for holiday events, which oh, makes me that... think that there are currencies specifically dedicated to holiday events. I will events. scream, <laughs> Carbine, <laughs> stop releasing currencies, please. Please release dungeons with the frequency that you currently release currencies. That would be super swell. Too many. I currencies. can't wait for severed heads currencies for Shades Eve. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have like bottle caps at some point that they're just gonna get sued. <laughs> like, owns Fallout? I don't know who owns the Fallout franchise. Somebody. Uh, so I I'm kind of confused about the extra currency thing. I don't know if this means that I am... So I'm going to be on the um, the subscription plan. What's mm -hmm. it called? It's called the signature, signature service. Signature. So I'm going to be a signature member for a while at least because I have like two months of thing already paid for. Uh, so am I going to be getting 25% more than I am now? Or is yes. everybody that's not signature yes. going to be getting 25% less? No. 
They so are not freedom, changing like, the base. Yeah, they're so not changing the base. Everyone that's yeah. signature is okay. getting more. Okay. If you're free to play, you're just going to live right where you are now. Okay, that's reasonable. Which isn't that bad. But Yeah, and I on. guess if they were to change the base, they'd have to rework the economy, like, drastically. So, so it, this is the last really big thing that I wanted to point out, which is XP. XP is earned uh, normally at free to play and an additional 25% XP if you're a signature player. This is the question I have for you guys. Currently, we have an additional 15% XP bonus for because they decided the game was too great. everything. Huh? No, yeah, and then you get an additional two percent uh, XP if you are uh, have a two-step authentication. So technically, if then you have rested XP, then you have but, XP well, pots. We're not talking about. Have an extra, we're, we're extra not going to talk about. Oh, no, okay. no, 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 no. I'm just talking about <laughs> flat bases that just stay constantly. Okay, we have seventeen percent XP bonus. Does that mean that that twenty-five percent is additional to the seventeen, or are we losing that fifteen percent? getting a 25 percent instead i'll take that betting it's additional i would honestly i wouldn't doubt if they got rid of so much easier i wouldn't doubt if they got rid of that 15 percent bonus to be completely honest with you because that 15 percent bonus was a band-aid because they're like oh everyone's complaining that it's too grindy well here you go we're gonna knock that 15 percent out give that to free to play people they can do the extra two percent if they get the two-step authentication but then there's the the signature players are just getting an overall 25 percent which means you and i the three of us would only be getting an additional 10 percent so I, I honestly think they're just going to keep it as a base and then just additional stuff, additional stuff, additional stuff. Yeah, so somebody in chat named Torin Ragequit says that uh, the 25% is an add on top. So apparently that would be 25% extra XP to what you're getting now, which would, that's a high percentage. <laughs> I'm going to stop playing my alt. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of XP. I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, if I can get like an Elder Gem every 30 seconds now with that 25%, that'd be great. That'd be super swell. <laughs> that'd be insane. Um, uh, and then there's and go for it. just two more ba major contention points that people have been talking about with this. One of this being the, um, the uh, what's it called? Q guilds and Circles. Oh, Guilds and Circles. That one's <laughs> more important. And honestly, yeah. I'm okay yeah. with the way it stands right now. Currently, <laughs> with free to play transition, if you are free, you cannot create war parties, you cannot create circles, you cannot create guilds, but you can be invited into them. If you're a signature, nothing changes as it is on live right now. People keep saying, well, what if I'm a guild leader and I go free to play? Well, they've already answered that. If you're a guild leader or a circle leader, you will retain your guild leader status, your guild and circle will stay alive, you can still manage it, even if you're free to play. I don't have a problem with this uh, at all. For and the idea is, is yes, we want people to come in, we want them to experience all the social aspects. We don't want to flood the market with extraneous guilds and circles that end up just collapsing under their own weight or a lack of activity. Well, I, so. I, I don't, I wouldn't say it, it would be extraneous guilds or circles. I mean, because circles mean absolutely, I mean, aren't a huge thing. And then as for a huge, large amount of guilds, I, it would be awesome to have more than three guilds to choose from right now. Uh, I mean, I, it wouldn't matter for me, but what I what I am going to say is that uh, I understand it because the way uh, the game works is that if you create a guild as a free-to-play player, you have a, ex like, and you have a bunch of people in your guild, you can turn around and get a whole bunch of gold, and this can be gold farming. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and that that is not something we want to do deal with in the game, and we've already had to deal with it in the past. Um it makes sense. This is just kind of 101 free to play stuff to me as far as I can tell. But that's just me. Yeah. So, we've gone through most of the big points in the free to play transition. Whoa, whoa, so I whoa, get whoa your buddy. Whoa, oh, whoa. No, 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 no. Q well, bypass? No. Oh yeah. Q bypass. Okay. So, just to make sense, Q bypass does not mean Q bypass for everything. It's not a front of the line pass for battlegrounds or arenas or dungeons. It's a cube bypass for logging in. Because let's be honest, the idea is to get more players playing. When that thing transitions into free-to-play, the first month or two, it's going to be heavy, heavy traffic. So oh, whether uh, you're going to be taking gucking in it for free and walking away two days later, or logging in and staying and subbing, it's a lot of people logging in. So And so they said, look, if you are signature status, we'll give you priority access so you can get in faster. Wasn't the whole point of mega servers for that to not matter? Yeah, and that's why I'm No, the idea like, for mega servers was to handle the people coming in. The mega servers in the in the login I don't think are are, are tied together. 
Well, are they? It's all the same. I don't know. Connect. I don't know. It's all the same. The, okay, so the whole point of the mega server is to have as unlimited amount of players on the server at one time. They if, if it, more, unlimited is not the right word. <laughs> as not more pe- as more people join, they can a large add, amount. They can add more server space without having to have the server go down. It's still not unlimited, but okay. I, I, I'm, 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 a heavy I'm, amount. It's more. We can make it larger than than the amount of people that are going to ever log into the game theoretically. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sure. So then, in our case, it's unlimited yeah. for us. Okay, it's it it's more than we can fathom. Um, so the whole point of that is, is, I don't understand why it would matter on logins because we could they could theoretically just continue to make the server larger and larger and larger, so that more and more people can pass through and be in. Okay, I have an analogy for this. My analogy is thus: If you've ever been to Disneyland. Let's take the Haunted Mansion into consideration as this idea. It's a people mover. It's designed to get people in and out constantly through this ride. Mm-hmm. Now, the ride is the mega server. It's just going to keep pumping people in. It's going to keep pumping people through. It's going to keep pumping people out. The queue to get into the Haunted Mansion, to get into that Doom buggy, is... I, I used to work there. I just keep using the terms. Um, <laughs> the, the line is the queue. The mm-hmm. line is the queue to log in. Once you're in the mansion, in the elevator, going down, seeing the hanging guy, now you're in the actual game. But getting in there, the wait time's like 40 minutes. Yeah, but That's the, why if you have the signature service, you now have to wait like maybe 5, 10. And the then you dif- get to enjoy the rest of the ride. The difference between that scenario and this scenario is that instead of uh, the queue, uh, like the, the uh, speed of the ride increasing, it would be that they made the entire thing twice as big. It's not a perfect analogy. Right? That's, <laughs> but, well, that's that, what I'm saying. So, I mean, there, there are tons of other things that could be taken into consideration aside from just space on the server, like... Uh, the amount of time it takes to process each login request or like to th- there are a lot of other technical reasons that there could be that a queue could be necessary that would still result in everybody being on the same server at the same time. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So it's possible that it's it it, it 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 doesn't make any sense for for us to really talk about what why this shouldn't apply to that specific thing because the technical reasons are are so many <laughs> but yeah but yeah. It, either way it's it's line queue it's it's to get yes. into the actual game it's to get into the server yeah. maybe they're going to switch us back to normal servers now right. now now keep this in mind all this is updating as we get closer and closer to the transition things True. can change things can be altered we have True. a disclaimer for that which we haven't put up yet because someone's lagging behind don't take our word for it where do you want me to put the disclaimer <laughs> I have a giant. Right over your face. I have a giant screen right here that I can't. You transition back to the normal screen. Come on, come on, come on. Let's do this. <laughs> Did you just clap at him? Indigo might murder you in your sleep. Here, would you like me to also put the tinfoil hat on as well? <laughs> Let's just flood the whole screen. Okay, so we talked about most of the major so points. We obviously didn't go over all of them because people have already seen them. They've already talked about it. Shaq and Oscar talked about it. Wildcast talked about it. The live stream covered it. Let's get a little more of our own opinions on it, because I've personally kept my voice out of the subreddit and the forums last few days to di- digest this. Digest this? What do you guys think? I stayed out digest of it this. because digest I, this. I didn't want to hear people. <laughs> Is that bad? No. Not really. True. No, uh, no, no, it's not bad at all. So I was... Go um, I'm going to go back to the way we were talking way back when we kind of very first started this podcast, maybe like around episode 12 or something like that, when we... We're talking about free to play, and that that subject was broached over and over again. And we had talked about what our opinions were, and mine was uh, the only free to play transition I've ever been a part of was Team Fortress Two, and that worries me a little bit because the free to play transition for Team Fortress Two, while it was successful, it got a lot of people in, made the community unbearable. Like mostly young people joined because they were the people who couldn't join before because they didn't have money, and they were not all the most mature people in the world, and you know those kinds of problems. The Wildstar community right now, if you're in-game, nine times out of ten you interact with someone, it's a great interaction. There's obviously the like trolls every once in a while and you just gotta deal with that, that's the internet. Um, but going free to play, that ratio might shift towards the negative side. I hope it doesn't. I'm more than willing to see, you know, how it plays out. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm at with that. Like, I hope it does not affect the really, really high standards that I have for this community in game. Okay. Uh, so I'm waiting for someone to go through our old uh, podcasts and find the time when I said uh, 
I'm going to quit if this game goes free to play. I'm legitimately well, waiting for someone. Here to... we are. Zero hour. Yeah. So uh, my my answer to that is, is I've 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 grown too attached to the game. I've grown extremely attached to the game. I've grown extremely attached to the community, the people that I talk to on a regular basis, and I've grown uh, attached to the community for SQS a lot. That being said, if for it, it, I will keep playing the game as long as I'm still enjoying playing the game. That entitles the community as well. And the problem I have with free to play usually is that the community tanks. And that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid the community will tank and that is going to cause me to no longer have fun. Because if you're playing an MMO by yourself, you're not playing the right game. Like you're not even playing the game. You know, the whole point of an MMO is to be, be, be playing it with other people. And as free to play usually happens, is it that, that, pile of trolls that used to live on Facebook saying this game sucks why is it free to play are now have access to the game and they're, they're coming on, they're, they're coming so I'm waiting for zone chat to just be like oh this game still sucks because people now have no barrier to come in and shit talk people that are enjoying a game so we'll see what happens go for it doc Okay, yeah, I, I can see that. Now, I I wrote down notes so I can keep myself on track with this. So at first, I was very angry when I heard free to play instead of buy to play. And I went, oh my god, this is, ah, I can't, I can't <laughs> fucking stand free to play games for the exact reasons you guys pointed out. I had to digest the last few days about everything. Uh, and hearing Donatelli and Pappy be very frank about it, at first I was like, no, you guys are wrong, why? Make it buy to play, we can get extra money so we can pay people to stay on this goddamn team. And then it hit me that I could be right, and at the same time, I could be also a little bit entitled going, I want to keep my gated community, and maybe free-to-play is probably the better option. Um, I have also said in the past, you know, when it goes free-to-play, my thing has always been how they treat the player, how they treat how they're going to charge the player, and then also how the community treats itself and each other. So far, I really do like this setup for free-to-play. Yes, some things are a little harsh, and they're questionable, and I really have issues with them, but Omni Bits will take care of a lot of the purchasing stuff. Uh, the weird thing that really scares me is the potential pricing for additional optional content, like expansion packs or other kind of side quests and oh, whatnot. I that. really hope it's fair. We didn't touch on it. Uh, it it's, it's kind of a, a footnote right now because they haven't done anything for pricing yet. Same thing with the loyalty program in the cash shop. We only touched about endcoins. Uh, I... If it, I understand charging like five, ten bucks for some kind of optional content, if it's worth it, if the value and the content match together, I'm cool with that. But if you start seeing an expansion pack for like 20, 25 bucks on top of whatever people are paying, I, I, I just gotta go. No, 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 no. I, I can't. Why are you doing this? That's it's too much. Like, at least I feel. I will really start having issues with that. What the if community? What mm -hmm. if they were like, all right. So it's quarterly updates. So if you're subscribed for four months, you get the the update for free. If you're free to play, you have to pay an additional twenty five dollars per. I, I have to take in how the free to play gets charged as well, and mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to make that kind of exception for them. Mm -hmm. So, to, but then again, it's all personal opinion. Yeah. My my idea of thinking, oh, twenty five bucks is too much. Somebody else go, no, I'll pay twenty five bucks. That's all personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I I am also a little afraid of the community. But I'm also afraid of the current built-in community. The reason I asked you guys and talked to you guys about Strange Tales from Outer Space and the reason we started it up was I wanted to have a game where community can be accepting, they can have discussion, they can be, they can have dissenters, they can have discussion, they, they can be brought together. Yes, we're going to have an influx of people. I don't want the community that's currently active to close itself off to them. That's, that's what I'm true. really worried about. Yeah, Not so and... much the trolls. I'm worried about how this community is going to go, oh, okay, here's new free players. Instead of being open to them and having an open mind and open discussion and being helpful, I don't want them to go, no, no, this is our game first and you're free to play and I don't, you sit over here over your garden wall and I'll sit over here in my castle. No, that's not how we do this. How would you we tell are a goddamn if, community. How would you tell if someone's a free to play player? 
But you say, uh, they'll, like, give you'll me your... Able, you'll be able to find out through. Give me your legendary uh, living legend. And fight me to your guilt, noob. <laughs> I swear, if I ever hear anyone say, if you're not wearing your living legend, like, tag, then I'm not gonna be in this, like, dungeon with you or whatever, I will just immediately, and for the rest of every day that I play this game, report them. Every single day. I will have a list by my desk, and every morning now, I'll wake up, Sign into Wildstar, report a list of people for being douche nozzles, and then log out and go to work. That's going to be my the reason, schedule. The reason I brought that part oh, up there is just, that oh, Jazzy, that me, Jazzy and mm. Shadda said, hey, the community has been so used to defending itself from outside of the game that it could actually physically like, really happen. Uh, other other unnamed websites that came back from the dead don't, follow, don't do their research and thrash the game, so their community thrashes the game, and they're coming in. Other communities that or, or spurned, and rightfully so, from what they were trying to get from the game or coming back in, that we could be defensive. And I pray and I hope that the community that's listening to it, to this podcast, and listening to this this live stream, can take a deep breath when the transition happens and go, yeah, it's going to be different. We can still make this better. And as long as we keep the community as in inviting and accepting and as up-to-date and as knowledgeable and not gate ourselves off I'm going to still be here running STOS, and I hope you two are with me through most of all of it, and I, I hope that we keep having people come back. So, so, so Krug, Krug said something this week, uh, and I uh, 100% full-heartedly agree with what he said. Oh, you agreed with something. Okay. I'm, in, I'm interested in what you have to... Go ahead. So Krug made a statement saying, uh, if anyone bashes on someone for being free to play, like, I instant ignore like just oh, immediately yeah because the thing is yeah. is that while i do not plan on becoming a free-to-play player if you become a free-to-play player i'm not going to bash on you for being a free-to-play player if that's the if that's the game that you want to play and that's the access that you want to have do it that's uh, cool yep. awesome more people into the game because you guess what now guess what more dungeons are going to pop more pvp is going to pop more arenas more more everything's going to pop more because there are going to be more people and i appreciate that aspect of it expect bad players i will say expect i will it. say Fully please feel free to know. continue judging people by their merits like i have no problems with you yeah. judging people by their merits if somebody's a douche call him a douche but don't call him a douche because he's not paying money for it, the game that's it, dumb it, exactly exactly and that that's what i got from that statement that you made is yeah. that if exactly if someone's being an ass then one don't day screw them. but uh I will judge nope, the dick. nope nope <laughs> nope not by nope <laughs> just stop just just stop now just oh uh, fuck my children will nope. open to this game nope. and judge a dick nope. not by the size of his penis, <laughs> but the color and inside of the fortitude of it. If he's a douche, he shall call him a douche. I'm gonna ignore that You're whole entire so part good. just You're happened. So good. I'm gonna ignore that entire part and just continue. I have to a dream. Nope. I will finish Sword Maiden Veteran. Without dying fifteen times in one run, oh. and fuck that holdout. Uh. The end. <laughs> Indigo, please. Bring <laughs> uh but but so something that i am i was I, I will say something very very positive and we were talking about being defensive uh people um not us not us specifically but uh the community of wildstar because they have been defensive outside of the game that they may be defensive to those new players coming in i will say running around because i just started an alt running around there has been a tremendous amount of people that i've noticed in zone chat going hey guys if you need help uh you know let me know if you're a new player i you know i'd love to help you know anything that you guys need any questions in zone areas i'm like oh are, have you been playing yeah i've been playing since beta i just wanted to be here to help out anyone that's new or coming back to the game if they need help and i'm like that's so awesome that like i'm i and i'm hoping that that continues on so yeah so i have a few more words before we start to slow down and close off the free-to-play segment and talk about helping new players out this is why it's gonna be an extra long cast mm -hmm. uh hey uh carbino fix your goddamn optimization <laughs> please like, goddamn life of me i know some of you are listening you guys seriously please get a group together and just go look we're the phasing is kind of working we got to work on that a little more please you have time 
we don't we don't want to run in a situation like we did at launch where we have two weeks for elder game testing and that's it and we don't know what the hell we're doing you've had a year i know there's going to be hiccups for the first two months i get it please continue to keep fixing this and, but the, and making it better or you're going to drive all the people away in droves here's the thing is that we don't have two months we don't have two months after the launch we have the launch this launch has to go smooth because the thing is is that they it doesn't have to go perfect it has it, to go smooth. They can't go backwards. They can't go back to subscription model now that they've made this step. They can't go backwards. So what this means is you have to be on your freaking game and you have to be so smooth on this transition that those players that this one is their first time through or two manage to give them a second try. This is this is it, guys. Like you only have so many chances, and this has to be that. Um, it, there, there is something else uh, I wanted to mention before we move move on, though, is the one year anniversary stuff. Sure. Which yes. Uh, oh, we were talking about birthdays. Yes. There's another birthday we have to say. There's a couple Happy birthdays. Happy birthday, Wildcast. Yes, I was, it's their. Two, oh yeah. It's their two year. Can we sing happy birthday? Those old them? men are older than the game they're commenting on. Happy <laughs> birthday, Wildcats, Walter, and JB, who have started it up, and Avid Guru. Hell yes, the old men, the, the older statesman of Wildstar. Can, can, we, can no. we sing them? No, that is copywritten. We had this no, conversation, remember? Oh, right. A long conversation. <laughs> what about but, the other happy birthday song? No. But there are some awesome uh, birthday things that you will be getting. Oh, Doc, playing you a birthday song. No. Oh, yes. Do you want to birthday. say birthday? It's your candle blown birthday. <laughs> sweat, sweat, sweat. <laughs> Look, starting tomorrow, uh, if you're listening to the live stream, uh, June first, for those who are listening to the audio, through June June thirtieth, the whole thirty month. days, the whole month. If you log into WildStar in general, you're going to get a few awesome goodies. You're going to get the anniversary door title. You're going to get no 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 no. You have, to say, you have to say it right. Oh. You have to say it. it's not and it's not like that. It's anniversary tour. I'm the anniversary tour. Yeah, the anniversary it. tour. Well, yeah, well, yeah well, you have to think well, of it more uh, like Arnold, well, more uh, than like. We need Tony to come in and do this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you, what else are you getting? <laughs> You're also getting the anniversary rouse dower. Say that five times fast as a companion. Anniversary rouse dower. 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 Boom. Good job, good job. I'm, I'm clapping for that. You, uh, you're also getting a giant ass birthday cupcake decor item. I blame Cadium, by the way. A hundred percent blame Cadium <laughs> on this one. Can I? Any, anyone else agree or disagree? Yeah, I, I raise my hand and agree on this it, one. I'll, it's I'll take that. All her. I, all right. I literally think she just kept poking somebody. So I said, "Fine, I'll put the goddamn cupcake." In. <laughs> <laughs> can Can you start poking about the uh, taco space taco truck? Thank you. Um. <laughs> yes. uh, you also get a You also get a goddamn space taco truck multi person mount. It's gonna be awesome. You don't get tacos. that. You don't get that. Doc nope. is lying to everyone. Nope. You don't get that. God damn it. We've had a goddamn year, Carline! <laughs> what is coming to you? Hashtag Space Taco Truck is coming back! Season 2. <laughs> Good. Good. And it's you, should do, you should do a mock-up of it. You should do, like, a oh fully dockly artistic mock-up of what the Space Taco Truck should look like. There you go. And Challenge thrown! We'll see. Last but not least, you're actually getting a dance explosion device. It will not actually force people to dance, though. Damn it. I know. I was very disappointed oh, in that. That seems a little. Mm. Well, you you get. Uh, What's a, the point of dance explosion if no one dances in the dance explosion? So you get. You can't walk around with sunglasses and look cool going. Oh yeah. You also get uh, the official anniversary party starter pack, whatever that means. It's super vague. I have no idea what it is, but my assumption with this photo that they have attached is that it's like either one-time use uh, items or it's like usable items like single click items that like balloons poppers streamers or something like that My yeah search. that's that seems reasonable the little screenshot oh which oh, is okay. up so you can all see it so i don't need to describe it it's if balloons you've been paying attention to if you've been paying pay attention to the free to play announcement trailer and the pictures in the one year anniversary stuff there's some stuff you haven't seen before too like togas on granox and a dagon that follows people and what the f is that giant freaking thing, bot doom thingy? That's the Grenok is writing. Well, actually, we do know. Yes. So 
we're actually going to transition into that in the live streams. A few things that happened. They have talked about there being no leeway, blah, 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 blah. Afterwards, they said we're still kind of debating internally. But most importantly, the first two cash shop items have been leaked. And Donatelli leaked them. And he also leaked something else, which I caught on the second viewing. But let's go into the, the first two leaked items. The okay. cash shop, the first two items that are supposedly going into the cash shop is a mount called the Protostar Enforcer. It's that giant spider tank that the Granok is riding at the end of the announcement trailer. That little wolf, the Dagon, that's following somebody is most likely going to end up being one of the first cash shop pets. There's also a picture floating around on the internet about a bunch of new costumes. So those might be showing up as well. So keep an eye out for that. It's not confirmed. Uh, so there's sorry stuff in the works. But guys, um, please don't ask for dyes coming into the cash shop. And I, I, I ask because of this. Everyone wants to get cash shop dyes. I get that. What do you think happens to the dyes when they're on the cash shop? Their rarity rates will most likely skyrocket through the roof. It's, if it's already hard enough to get a supernova uh, white or black hole yes. black, Think about it now when you can actually pay for it. That drop rate's going to be insane. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, did you want to do your leg stretching now, and then we can continue on? Because uh, you wanted to do a little tiny break. Yes. Okay, so everybody that is still in chat, do not leave. We're doing an extra long uh, live stream tonight. The first part was all talking about the, the free-to-play transition. The second part after this break is going to be helping out any new and returning players. So guys, you have three to four minutes after we're done talking. We're going to take a small break and invite all your friends to come over that are thinking about joining the game, that are already coming back to the game, that have already resubbed. Because we're going to need your help and we're going to go through our own opinions on the best way to enjoy this game if you're resubbing or going to come into the transition. Awesome. And at, for that three minute break, we're going to have some lovely, lovely music playing and a lovely lovely video so here you go guys and we are back but i can't hear you because i haven't brought my sound up yet we're doing it live <laughs> all right now you're good <laughs> oh my God. so i hope you guys had a nice little potty break and i hope you guys had the chance to invite your friends and come check out what's gonna happen next What's I, I had next? to play that I'm, video. I'm so confused. No, I'm just okay. kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> hey, Indigo, can you post the link to that video in the chat? Someone was looking for it. Yes, it's yes. yes, I can. If you're listening to the audio podcast, you're probably tuning in right about now, and I'm going to inform you that this is the second half of the extra long cast we're doing this week for the free to play transition. Here's the thing: apparently, the internet knows Wildstar is going free to play. Did you know that? Nope. Nope, not at all. Okay, <laughs> show over, guys. See you later. <laughs> no. Okay, here's what's going on, guys. We're getting a large influx of players coming in in the next few months. They're going to resub. They're going to check it out right now, spend their 10 free days. When the transition happens this fall, we're going to have you more. And some people have also talking about, you know, already resubbing in general. So we figured that because we want to make the community stronger and, and help people out, that this second half of the podcast is going to be catering to that. We're going to be talking about community fun stuff, and we're going to be giving tips and tricks and advice, and we're going to be talking to you guys in chat as well to give their advice for people. That sounds a little vague, but bear with me. And, so first and, off. And again, this is not a permanent part of the show. It's it's just because we, ha we have so much going on this week that we're extending the show. It's still going to maintain the one-hour segment. It's just a special one this time. Yay. First off, for over a hundred viewers, what in the f? What? I, I had to just say that. That's freaking awesome. Everyone from EU and NA and everyone is jumping in right now. Oh my god! Thank you so much. I, I'm literally excited for this. Okay, let's continue. We want to make wow. this good for you. I'm gonna need you to calm the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not at all. <laughs> so we're gonna do some community stuff first. Uh, yeah. We actually got a really cool article this week from one of the riggers, or one of the devs from Wildstar on the MirandaWrites.com. They actually got a chance to talk about, and they got permission from Carbine, to discuss why is the Starfling so damn awesome? Why is it awesome, guys? It, it, it's pretty awesome. And it, have you guys seen this link? It's it's really, really funny. It's um, it, it's how the Starfling gets so fluffy. And it's the the whole entire uh, like diagram drawing of them building and creating the snarflings it's it's really awesome it looks like a so line i movie. haven't done i haven't done a whole lot of 3d design unfortunately myself i do know a little bit about it so what they do is they're using nerves to create its rig 
And with that in mind, the sculptors, the, the animators can actually move and squash and move the character around. I don't know how many other games are using nerves for their mounts and their character designs, but it gives it a little bit of that Tex Avery, Looney Tunes squash and pull that makes 2D animation so so visceral and, and, and nice and, and kinetic and gives it life. So with that nerves tech, the nerves rig, the snarflings can kind of squash and push and pull. You've seen it when it stops. You've seen it when it jumps. You've seen it when it flies around. It's it's something as an insight to the uh, the behind the scenes of Wildstar, and I'm really glad we got to see this. As a person who loves the art team and any art team and any kind of 3D modeling team, it's really cool just to see it's not just a block that moves around. They got to try technology you don't see that often. I think your daughter's so. excited too. <laughs> so yeah, if so, you're into that whole uh, like graphic design bit and you want to relate that to a game you enjoy, which is Wildstar, go ahead and take a look at the article because there's a lot of information that's way over my head in it. I, I really like the fact that it's just like showing you diagrams, drawings, showing you like how it moves and like how we made like I, I don't know. I just really like getting a peek behind. The, yes, the, you know what I mean. I'm just, super into that whole concept of like I want to know exactly how everyone does everything, and so this is a good start to that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's super cool. I re I hope they keep doing more. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to that. We got a whole bunch of other community stuff to go to before we get into helping out the new players. Yes, we do. So for those of you that don't know, in we, Wildstar, it's not mm -hmm. just hmm? no. I was guess, it's no, not no, no, just no. legendary weapons. We don't stop at legendary. Guys, what do we stop we, at? We, we don't go up to ten. We go up to motherfucking eleven in Wildstar. That we, pink though. So if you didn't know about the game, there's an additional. Huh? We stop uh, stop at eleven. What? God damn it! You're right there, buddy. Wait to wait to just Doc. stop me. My yeah, no. Keep talking. Mm -hmm. Keep talking. Oh, okay, cool. So for Wildstar, <laughs> you have obviously your rares and your legendary items. You also have one extra tier. They call it Artifacts. It is pink. It is awesome, as pink should be. Problem is, Artifact le Legends, Artifact Items, ugh, can't talk, are very rare. Spicy Piñata is the first person in the game to get a Artifact weapon. That pink, though. And he was showing off little bits of his Legacy Attunement for that, because... On your weapons, you can actually attune your weapons to become stronger. They do evolve over time, so it's, it makes it makes more sense to keep that weapon. And he's showing off uh, one of the two cool things is that one of the attunement items is to go to a place in the game and take on two raid bosses at the same damn time. Kind of like a council fight, but it, it's not just a council fight where it's like the power spread is even between the bosses and the raid. It's two legit 100% full power raid bosses at once. And you gotta kill them, or else your weapon never gets more awesome. And people will say, yeah, no, let's go do this. Let's take this on and, and do it. So, this is a little picture for you. I believe a spicy piñata is gonna keep posting stuff. I wanna keep showing that off. It should be pretty fun. So, speaking of how ridiculous people can be, there, so, for those of you that don't know, we were originally doing 40-man rating. We realized that was a bad idea. You can't, it's hard to, hard to accept that in this day and age. So, they did 20-man. Some people decided that 20 man wasn't enough and wasn't awesome. So they decided to do 12 man uh, genetic archives. I think that they were just like, um, I know we're kind of out of people and no one's available to do it, but there's 12 of us. Might as well just go in there and die a bunch. And they're actually <laughs> doing it though. Yeah. They're literally 12 man in GA. Eight, minus, eight people less on the DPS scale and they're still pushing through it. It's pretty cool. They cleared all genetic archives. Mm hmm. All do they all did it? I honestly think could probably ten man G at that point. So you even can, mm -hmm. even if this concept doesn't like make you really interested and want to watch the videos of them clearing the the uh, the raid, there's a fail compilation that they put where it was just like some people like just fucking up constantly, and it's the it's funniest awesome. thing. It's the funniest thing ever. Like one of the first things in the compilation is they're pulling these two. I think they're trash mobs. And somebody, like, the, the tank that's pulling them just rolls off of the ledge and kills himself. <laughs> it's just the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's just like, oh, that's and not Zeri's what you're supposed to do. Zeri Zen oh, from chat says, I think they actually are trying 10-man now, but they haven't had any updates on how far they're getting. They're literally going for it. It's so cool. <laughs> they're going to solo it next. Oh, Jesus Christ. People are already <laughs> soloing. <laughs> There's a tank that I've been told has been able to solo Mordecai Redmoon Red on his own in yeah. Veterans Volcano. Yeah. We saw that it's video insane. on this oh, podcast. That's <laughs> ridiculous. The, thing that the, happened. the, one, the yeah. one that you host. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> the, one, the one that you host, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that one? 
Yeah. Uh, it's been like 47 episodes, guys. <laughs> it's been a while. I can't remember everything. Okay, let's move on because like I said we have the big meat coming up. I just wanted to recognize some cool community stuff. You got your big meat. I got your big meat right here. Mm -hmm. Spats Mizo Star Temple Maze right here. Boom. This thing is meaty. It's a little bit of background. There's a guy on NA. His name is Spats Mizio. Mazio. He does mazes on his housing plot. He's had 15 so far. This specific maze, the Star Temple Maze, has been 987 pieces. Took 300 man hours to complete, supposedly. And is not just a normal maze. He's put up a challenge. Mm -hmm. He's opening up this maze on Saturday to yesterday, May 30th, at 11 a.m. Central Time. This challenge is going to go on until someone can finish it. The first person to solve that maze is going to get 100 bucks from Spats Mazio, Mazio himself. Now, if you're from Canada or you're an EU doing his maze and you're like you went, you made a bot an NA account and did it, he will actually change that $100 American into your your equivalent currency and he will send it to you. Mm -hmm. So this isn't just like cred or something. He thinks that his maze is so damn hard. It's awesome looking. I'm that, I, well, and it was yesterday. The yeah, event was yesterday. yesterday. So I'm pretty sure it still hasn't been solved yet. No. I'm pretty sure. Hunter, as far as we know, hasn't been solved yet. No, no posts online. No posts on Twitter. He's giving away a hundred bucks. Can you do it? I can't do it. I wouldn't. I already <laughs> know. It. I already know it. So basically, there is one room that has is built very specific, and if you can get to that room and then take a screenshot and send it to him, that is the only way that you can win. So he's not actually going to sit on his plot for you know watch and watch you. He's actually waiting for the first person to send the screenshot of that of that said room. So. Get there, take that screenshot, and make it happen, guys. <laughs> Say his name again in housing. Go to Spats Mazio. S P A T Z M A Z E O. Boom. Spats Mazio. So I, I want to see someone can make it. He said people have gotten in there, lost, and logged out, rage quit over his last maze. <laughs> <laughs> like people, people, he's throwing down the gauntlet, and I want to see if someone can finally pass it through. And if you click on the uh, Reddit link in the show notes, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, there is a video of the solution to his last maze that he made, which is crazy absolutely crazy like i'm i'm confused just watching it like i don't know I, what's going on so cal scattered good in chat says the exile dominion he is exile so exile, exile and yeah so if you're looking for that so let's move on to the next one there is a, a well, returning or new he's technically returning but new to content creation this guy named quantum he's from loppy seconds if i'm not correct if, if i'm correct he's saying that <laughs> i didn't know that you didn't you just now got the name Loppy Seconds. I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with That's it. really funny. That's really funny. I'm super into that name. That kills me around <laughs> forever, dude. It's an awesome name. Just saying how long it took you to get that name. Come on. Come on. Catch up. Anyway. Loppy Quantum is... <laughs> okay, okay. We get it. Sorry. I'm Loppy sorry. Seconds. Uh, sorry. Quantum, I should say. <laughs> has <laughs> now you're making me laugh, damn it. Quantum has been doing putting out balls amount of content. He's starting a new Machinima series. We don't have a whole lot of Machinima for Wildstar yet. He's starting a new series called Looking for Group, and this is episode one, the new guy. So you might see it playing in the background of the content window. I'm gonna put the link in the description for show notes. It's kind of slice of lifey. It's kind of uh, it's deadpan humor. It's like uh, I think Arrested Development or The Office, where there's no real laugh track for it. Like here's the joke, laugh here. It's just kind of. Here we are. This is the situation we're in. And if you play the game or are kind of new to MMOs in general or no MMOs in general, the humor is a little more universal than you would think. It's not just well specific. So it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's I, nice. I, I like I think, it. I think this is great. And uh, he has some pretty good voices and could probably use a few more. Oh, God. <laughs> you fucking, huh? you huh? goober. You're the gooberiest of goobers. Uh, I think so he was says actually the man still... who laughs at loppy seconds. Oh, dude, don't judge the loppy seconds <laughs> giggles because those are the best giggles. Uh, I think he was actually looking for suggestions on what kind of content to create. Am I mistaken in that? Yeah, uh, I think so. So, yeah, go uh, hit him up. Tell him what you'd like to see, and uh, maybe he'll start doing it. Because I know that like that machinima style video isn't the only thing that they were planning on doing. So yeah, Chet they did do a free to play thing for him too. Chestnut and Chat says that we should get him on. We should probably mm. work on doing that. Mm. Mm. We may already have started doing that. Mm. 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 Mine, 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 mine. No, nope. nope, nope. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. This is this <laughs> it's just, it's just look, mine, mine, my DPS, mine, mine. Where's my, where's my mine, mine. Where's my DPS? <laughs> Warriors, my DPS, mine. 
<laughs> Moving on. Oh, my warriors, my DPS is horrible now. Blah, 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 blah. We're so OP as hell, and we just don't want to admit it. We got nerfed the last patch. Did you smoke uh, pot during the break? <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got to donate to a worthy cause here, guys. Because every time we queue into a match, a warrior is not getting 50 kills a match anymore. <laughs> this, is a, this is a problem. We need to understand this. Because if warriors aren't getting all the kills and all the DPS, they're not war willing everything in sight, the medics take all the glory. You can't have that. So if you just can, take a time out of your day and let Sarah McLaughlin play in the background as you do this and just hashtag donate 100 DPS to the warriors. <laughs> they just, they, they need it. They, I will remember you. Oh, God. As you respawn. <laughs> I will remember you. You know how I said I was going to quit well, Wildstar my new piece if of they went purple. free to play? I'm going to quit this podcast if you keep singing. <laughs> Holy shit. Literally, when you started singing, we lost five people. Literally, when I started singing, we lost five people. I'm not even joking with you. Uh, that legitimately happened. We don't need them. Uh, but no, <sighs> seriously, Warriors, you're fine. It's a satire piece on, on Reddit. I think it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, give, give, uh, give, give, uh, Give a little help here. Hashtag donate 100 DPS. And moving on to our daily news report. No, I'm not. I get. I give up on you. I think you. Okay, guys. Here's your weekly scorching report. Ready? Eventually, when? Yeah. What about it? He did. Oh my god. He did. Scorching people. Log back on. He did. Yeah. Back on. He did. Look, I love the, the daily scorching reports. They're freaking hilarious. Just watching people just do cat trains and watching people just try to open world PvP on there. The daily scorching report, give me more. It's just, I love seeing what random shit people do for those 90 minutes waiting for scorching to pop to then kill him in like five. So fast, he doesn't even go into the stupid egg anymore. And Volterism says, I'm still not convinced people don't know what the hell they're doing in PvP. Mm, it's man debatable. It's still fun to watch people just go, ah! Oh my god, why was I queued? I was waiting for Scorchwing yesterday. There's a soccer <laughs> who goes, hey, what's this button do? He literally flags himself on PV in P to PvP. Within five seconds, four soccers pop out of stealth and backstab him. It was awesome. He literally just went, what's this button? Click. And there's a dead body right there on the floor next to him. Oh, I love it. People, I love it. Give me more Scorchwing. It's just too fun. The stories from Scorchwing are awesome. I just wanted to say... That I, I do hope dead. they do what they did with Starcom Basin with Scorchwing. No joke. I, legit yes. I I really hope that they move that forward. So yeah, there's an issue with that. A lot of people are having problems with contracts not completing with Scorchwing. They're having problems with uh, them lacking out and DCing, not getting kill credit. I'm not high. I promise I'm not. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure goes. Uh, so... I hope there's some phasing that happens soon with Scorchwing or uh, increased timers or something. No, no definitely know. not increased timers. Phasing maybe, but I like these giant groups just like oh, face super rolling fun. world bosses. And here's it's the thing. so funny. Are, are any of us three having issues with Scorchwing, like frames a second and disconnections happening? Haven't even tried. I have I've not. I've been there once. You, I've, you, you I've been had, doing it every time the contract comes up. You had a problem last night. It lagged on so bad that the audio lagged out for you. Yeah. <laughs> There we were 300 forgot. people yeah, waiting for Scorchwing. I had a rate of like 60 people, and the audio lagged out. How many people were there? It's the first time, first time I have ever had problems with Scorchwing. I've never gone down below 30 frames a second, which is pretty funny. And all of a sudden, the audio, Scorchwing dies, and like two seconds later, you're here. Oh, so <laughs> just a quick update and just a fun little reference for when we record for the people who are um, listening to the podcast. Apparently, Wildstar servers were attempted to be fixed but it didn't work and so now they're in emergency maintenance mode with no ETA as to when they're going to be back up. Hopefully it's before the end of this podcast because I want to play Wildstar at the end of this podcast. Yeah, I, I cougar in his team man. I hope you guys can get it fixed fast. Just saying it's you guys got time. Use this as a, as a learning curve and exercise. <laughs> get it done. Get it done. And our last piece of community fun for this week. Idesthenia which I, that's how you say the name, I believe. She's been doing a bit of walkthroughs, kind of like how um, Nexus or Yardcore Nexus does it. And uh, she visited. She visited. Oh my god, I can't talk. She visited. I did. did, 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 did. I just Senia is on EU. She goes through all the different plots and does like fly throughs of them, essentially, quote unquote. This week, Jeb Miller from Jabit is showing off their Marauder Stronghold. It's kind of awesome and metal. 
It's it's pretty sick. It is really I, awesome. I don't have any words for it. I really don't. It's just cool. I love watching some of the stuff. And you know, if you watch Q Times and STOS, uh, for the NA side, uh, Chestnut from Black Dagger Society also does Nexus Yardcore, Yardcore Nexus, or she actually has a talk to sit down with the developer of the plot. So it's a little something extra. So if you if you from the EU, check out Idacinia from NA. Check out Yardcore Nexus. Just saying. Okay. So we're going to transition now into our last subject of the night. If you've been listening to the podcast or watching the live stream, we've had a, a topic that's been gone for a long while for obvious reasons, kind of. We called it the 101. Now, the 101 was supposed to help people. People that forgot, people that don't know, people that need to know, people that want to know. And since we figured transition to free to play is happening in the next few months, we would like to bring the 101 back. So here's... 101. Welcome back, guys. Thank we're you. Gonna... I'm glad to be back. Yay. So we're we're talking about this specifically, and Twitch chat, we'd love to get your input as well. We're going to talk about some community stuff. So we might not hit all these points. So there's a bunch of questions players have been asking in the forums, players have been asking on the subreddit, they've been asking on the Twitter. We figured instead of having people constantly repost stuff, and when the free-to-play transition comes out, repost more stuff, we would do an audio collection of that. You could just point to people and say, S2S episode 47, go past the one hour mark. They're talking about stuff like this. So instead of talking about OP flavors of the month stuff, what do we think about the classes? There's people that, I need to pick a new class. What do I pick? Do I pick this or do I pick this? Uh, it really falls into several different flavors. You want to go melee? Do you want to go sustain DPS and that kind of stuff? So what do you guys think about the classes? And if we're going to recommend classes to people, how would we re- how would we recommend them? You so... Go for yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. There's a, there's a great video, actually, that Wildstar made around launch that talks about the differences between the classes uh, and about really what they were designed to cater to. Uh, so, for example, the Esper, and this probably isn't 100% valid anymore, but was designed to cater more towards people that were used to other MMOs and kind of like the tab targeting type gameplay and stuff like that, uh, which has uh, since been changed a little bit. Um, and medics are like, you know, in the fray healers, melee healers, basically, although the range is a little bit longer. Uh, and spell slingers are like long range glass cannon, just raining hellfire down on anybody that walks in their way kind of thing. Uh, really, honestly, my advice for picking a class is to go and watch that class's gameplay at endgame. Specifically at endgame, because it changes so, yeah. so drastically from leveling to end game that like judging it based off of the leveling time it doesn't make any sense because most of your time in this game is going to be at level 50 assuming yeah. you actually you know enjoy the game and stick with it yeah. even at free to play uh, once you get your 50 you got a ton of stuff to do and you loving that character or hating it hopefully yeah. you love it. I, and I also each it. class has two roles so make sure you look up gameplay for both roles because you might get stuck playing a role that you're not used to and so it would be nice if you enjoyed that too and we get like no more you, caveats. It's not just the roles. Some of them, some of them have different types of builds for that role that, you, the, that not everybody oh, thinks sure. tries out. Yeah, but it, it, at the very least, like enjoy the gameplay style. Maybe yeah. not like oh, okay, this one only has one build or this one has two like valid builds or whatever. Because that stuff changes. Like all that buildy stuff changes. But the so gameplay style, I don't think will. Let's go one at a time. Espers, how would you describe them? And then how would you rec- how would you think in your opinion how to play an esper? Or w- what would to look in for if you want to play an esper? Long range utility with high damage. I'm gonna say uh, super utility with a bunch of mid range, occasional long range stuff. They are glass cannons. Do not get near anything with an esper. Yeah, you will die. Uh, yes. I I would say um, slow at first, uh, but then indestructible at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and again. Well, no, I mean, the reason I say that is because when you first start with an Esper, you, you're stuck with the long range, but the second you get the lifesteal with your uh, your swords uh, and add a heal on your bar, you're indestructible. Like, yeah. P- PvE, you, I took PvE. On, PvE, I took down a five-man boss by myself. With an Esper. With an Esper. And I saw have, it happen. Haven't been able to do that with anybody else. They're soloable like crazy once you finally find the groove for them and you're a little more up in levels. In PvP, they are utility gods. Mm-hmm. If you thought the Ice Mage in World of Warcraft was a pain in the ass, welcome to the Esper's House of Pain. Mm-hmm. They can knock you back, they can disarm you, they can freeze you, they can reach you, they can shield themselves, they can give themselves interrupt armor faster than anybody else can. Ah! Fuck you, Espers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Calm down, buddy. And as a healer, Espers are great at sustained healing over time with giant AoEs and drop markers. So they can drop a heal down and kind of keep going. 
So if you're looking for that healing, like more traditional-esque style healing, and more sustained healing over time, go for an Esper. What about the medics? Don't Correct. think about flavor of the month. Correct. Just medic as a class in general. So medics would be uh, like sustained DPS, high sustained DPS, and high burst healing, basically, at a medium range. Yeah. Um, they're wonderful. They're great. It's all I play. Make, and, come yeah, play medic, medic is Krug's main. And for yes. me, I've played enough of them to go. They like to get in the action. If you're a healer or a melee person that doesn't want to be slapping people up in front, the medic's a kind of fun, constantly running around class that's just putting out just tons and tons and tons of damage. They can drop... <laughs> so, and they can do multiple things with the healing and with the, uh, the DPS. They can't just do... They, they can do a little bit of everything in this sense. They can drop fields that control the, the battlefield. Literally. Yeah. They can drop fields to heal people. They can drop the zone power is stuff. strong. Yeah, the zone if you like to control the strong. battlefield, go with a medic. I would call them really... wub machines. Next, wub machine. <laughs> <laughs> stalkers. Do stalkers. Uh, stalkers. Stalkers. Uh, uh, awesome tanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's tank what's different in their taking style? Their tank mechanics really interesting because it so, was all based off of self heals yes, and deflection. And dodging. Yeah, yeah, dodging and self heals. So uh, oh, sorry, dodging. While while other while other tanks are based off of being able to take a lot of damage, it's about being able to just not get hit. Period. And when you do get hit, you know, being able to heal yourself, which is super awesome. God and damn it! What <laughs> keep every time we start a new class, uh, voluntarism says class whatever class we're talking about really sucks unless bep. B-pulse? 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 What's B-pulse? <laughs> I don't know, but it's kind of funny. He's like, no, that class sucks, and that class sucks, and that class sucks. Please, There's a counter please, for everything. Please explain who B-pulse is so that I can go to sleep tonight. Well, let's it. continue with that. Uh, and extremely high burst damage. Yes. Extremely and high burst damage. With the quintessential caveat. ability to go invisible. Yes. With the caveat of they're much more positionally dependent than other classes. You need to be behind somebody, you need to be the side of somebody. If you're DPSing, if you're tanking, you need to make sure you're not constantly going into stealth because you'll screw everything else up for the rest of your group. You oh, have wow. to really be aware as a stalker. There's somebody named B Pulse in our chat. <laughs> 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 that makes sense. B Pulse, uh, about, somebody thinks you're really, really good at Wildstar in here. <laughs> B Pulse is amazing. Uh, what, what about engineers? Uh, very difficult to start playing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played an engineer. Uh, they're very strong tanks, from what I hear. Now, and here's here's stuff. what you're gonna get from a lot of players, but engineers. Range tank. Meh. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. Ra see, range tank, and they're honestly, and I know we're not talking flavor of the month, in a really good spot right now. They have that's, a I mean, lot, a lot of utility, and can do a lot of different things, and they control the battlefield way better than most. Uh, the reason I say meh is that every time people ask, "What about engineers?" the general consensus is meh, but not in a bad meh. It's like. Meh, we don't get flavor of the month like everybody else. We don't get we don't get super 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 buffed. We don't get super 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 nerfed. The reason why people don't talk about engineers as much as the other classes is because, quite frankly, they're they've always been the most balanced of classes in this game. They have clear disadvantages. If you want to build a tank tank engineer, you have range, but you're slow as balls. You don't have gap closers, you don't have escapes as as an engineer tank. But good luck trying to have someone kill you, because you will last forever in a goddamn day. If you want to become a DPS engineer, you're going to blow shit up fast. And you're going to wreck people hard. But even with that heavy armor, you cannot go at it alone. You will get blown the fuck up. And you have bots with you. you can, if you want a, a pet class, you have constant bots and pets with you. The engineers are kind of the weird redhead stepchild in the sense that no one ever bitches or overly says, they're amazing, always do them. But they're a great, great class that have a nice... Difficulty with them in, in their in their resource management and everything else. So if you yeah, want to the, the resource management is really it. fun. It's like the I think the best in in WildStar as far as like being something that is engrossing. I guess and I mean this is coming from somebody who's never gotten an NG to fifty. I've only leveled an NG. I've never played end game with NG. Case Apparently the thing. OP huh? is F in threes according to uh, Eclipse and B Pulse. No. Everybody in this chat has probably more experience in engineers than the three of us. Uh, I've also <laughs> made a piss off a lot of the engineer community by hating them until I rolled one and I went, eh, they're not bad, but meh. That's just my opinion. Uh, here's one thing to keep in mind, though. If you're playing an engineer tank or you're playing with an engineer tank, if you see that engineer tank run, you want to run. Because <laughs> an engineer tank can't run. So if he's running, he's probably going to die. And if he's going to die, you're probably going to die. 
Yeah. <laughs> to die. There's two more classes we'll go over real quickly. There are best class in the game, Spellslingers. Mm. And then second best class in the game, Warriors. Mm. So Spellslingers, if you want to go with an uh, archetypal role, long range sniper class glass cannon. They don't really have medium range abilities. Same with their healing. They Everyone has telegraphs in this game. Spell slingers are very unique in the fact that a lot of their, their telegraphs are very long. They're very narrow. So their difficulty in playing with the spell slinger right is learning to guide your shots and lead your shots and lead your heals and being able to time your abilities just right. Their resource is a little different as well. It's it's toggleable. It's constantly recharging and, and dipping. I play spell slingers, my main favorite class. And uh, they really do change once you get their tier 3 amp abilities. Void Pact, which makes utility and healing insanely different, changes it a lot. Uh, healing Torrent, which is a great long-range heal. And Assassinate, which is... Come on, it, it, the name implies. It's stupid range damage. Their Glass Cannons, they... Uh, they ban that guy. Ban Nathorn right now. Yep, no fucking uh, zero tolerance. Fuck you. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, that was absurd and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that was dumb and absurd. So, spell slingers, if you want to always feel like you, you are a long way away, if you like to just be that that sniper in an FPS going boom headshot, boom headshot, boom headshot, roll spell slinger. They're stalkers from range, as Rulam from from chat just said. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. And, and warriors, if you want to be an '80s wrestling powerhouse with a giant fucking sword <laughs> and a goddamn Nintendo power glove, and you're blowing shit up and you're being awesome, but you don't have the DPS goddamn apparently. Nintendo power glove. <laughs> It's true. It's not. It's warriors, not warriors are like an '80s childhood dream come true. Big ass sword, big ass glove. Come get me, motherfuckers. That's what a warrior is. Their Pretty tanking much. style is. They have a little little... ability. They have, they have spin a... it to win it. What else do you need? Go yeah. play a warrior. You can spin it to win it. That's it. That's all you need. Spin so, it it. but here's the thing. So engineers, when they're tanking, because warriors can tank, they're about getting it. They're keeping that that. Uh, that threat and not letting ever letting go and soaking up tons of damage. You need to always heal uh, engineer tank. Stalker tanks much less reliant on heals. You can't kill me if you can't touch me. Warrior tanks are versatile in that sense where they don't actively get as much threat as fast as engineers. They don't dodge as many attacks as stalkers. They're kind of a good middle ground class and they can be really focused into one or the other. That's what I believe anyway. Some people will say differently. They can be really utility helpful as well with what you can consider the bloodlust which is, uh, shoot, power link. Mm -hmm. uh, they can turn the tide of a lot of battles, and with their kinetic energy, like think of it as a cross between energy and World of Warcraft. I'm going to give you an analogies of the biggest game in the market, and rage from any other warrior game ever. Rage or 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 <laughs> guy or dry or whatever the fuck you want to call it. So they can be a little difficult to manage that resource. So keep that in mind playing warriors. There's been a lot of change in that. In PvP, get yourself some ability to break out of stuff because they can get caught really easily and kited really easily. To make that up. They're surprisingly mobile. They can mm -hmm. jump in, they can suck you in, they can pull you in, they can lock you down, they can smack you, they can blind you, they can tether you, if you build them right. Yeah. Warriors are very malleable. Well, and, and as a whole, that's a brief description of the classes, but the thing is, is that you should play the class that you enjoy most. And if that takes you starting three or four different characters and trying multiple versions, absolutely, do it. Um, if not, and, and, and Hey, not, not being that guy, but if you buy a box now, you get all 12 slots, character slots, you, you have you time know, to burn a kill. You know what I mean? You've got, you've got the ability to try as many characters as you want for the rest of your life. If you buy a box, but if you don't have 12 slots. Don't be afraid to just delete a character after 10 levels, get it up to level yeah. 10, see how it feels. You're not pigeonholed into a class and no one in the game is going to tell you, you have to stick with this class because we need this for the raid. F that. Play what sounds fun to you. Don't be stuck with an Esper for 50 levels. You'd rather play a Stalker. And honestly, no joke, the videos that Wildstar did post when they originally came out about each one of the classes, watch those, find out what sparks your interest, and and, and start with that one. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I knew from the beginning, watching the video, that Stalker was going to be my class. I just knew it. I knew it. What? Whereas I changed. I thought medics were going to be my mm -hmm. go-to class. I played them and I went, not for me. And I fought spell slingers. I never play ranged classes. I have spell slingers. They're wizards. Wizards are lame. Space, motherfucking cowboy. Pistols, dual shot, bang, bang, kill, kill. I'm awesome. F you. <laughs> 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 so that's just, that's just me. So as we move on with it, you're going to be experiencing the leveling path of Wildstar. It's not as grindy as you think it is. People like keep saying that grinding well starts horrible. Blah, 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 blah. It's really not. 
You, you've got tons of freaking quests. They're doing more and more breadcrumb, breadcrumb quests to lead you on through path through zones. So don't worry about it. There are yeah, I mean, some issues with it though. After the free to play thing, the if you're you know currently subbed, the uh, additional XP is going to be awesome. And the fifteen percent XP they gave everybody that fifty percent boost helped wonders with the the grindy feel of the leveling he was he was doing air quotes for the people listening to the podcast by the way <laughs> that's true that does does not translate to the podcast <laughs> so it clips, chat, i know i need gonna... to make my bed why does everybody keep telling me i forgot to make my bed is that a problem is that like you a know huge what? get up problem? and make your bed right now so you not gonna get <laughs> no get up and make your goddamn bed do it right now because i'm gonna tell the twist chat yes do it you did it <laughs> so twist chat we're gonna ask what are your tips and trips tips and tricks for leveling in pve pve for people that are going through the leveling curve my opinion is wow you suck so my opinion is if you're going to level through wildstar don't be afraid to talk in zone chat <laughs> hashtag make your bed crew <laughs> 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 okay, sorry. Leveling. Sorry. Tips and tricks for leveling. Right now, queuing times for adventures and dungeons suck if you're leveling. It's really hard to get a group together. It's really hard to convince most 50s to mentor you to go in through right in the void. I, that might change come transition. I beg to differ. Okay, continue. So, uh, I'm working on my spell slinger right now, and uh, I have been PV, I'm sorry, a PVE dungeons and stuff like that have been popping in a decent amount of time, like 10, 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Which I, I think is I think is a decent amount of time. Are you right there, buddy? You both no, are broken. No, regret <laughs> that decision <laughs> for my entire <laughs> life, I feel. <laughs> Uh, so so dungeons are dungeons are popping i haven't had a tremendous amount of uh, of pvp because i haven't been queuing uh so I, I i have i have no idea what to say for pvp but pve uh we have 10 15 minutes isn't horrible for the amount of time it's been which is like 30 40 minutes you know that's how it used to be so you know how people always say the only bad question is a question that's never asked. To be honest, for leveling and Wildstar, it's the same thing. You may be thinking, oh, I wanted to ride in the void at level 15, but I don't have a group. If you never ask people in the zone, you'll never know what they want to do. The best way to get results in this game is to ask or to tell. Simply saying, hey, I need two people to help me kill this prime. 10 to 1, you're going to get replies in zone chats going, okay, cool, I'll meet you there. Or I need, I need a tank and a healer to do uh, ride in the void. Or I need to do Proto, Proto Games Academy. As long as you say it, and as long as you can and be nice about it and polite about it, do that. If you decide that you don't want to ask for anything, there's several types of stories going on in the zones. Storylines and quest lines. You have the world story, which is the main storyline of the game that leads you through the zones. Those will give you the biggest reward. That should be your number one priority, because that'll get you through the zones faster. You then have zone stories, which are the little side stories you need to the zones. that obviously don't give as much experience, but are also pretty high priority if you want to just kind of grind yourself out. Uh, the ones that you are most familiar with and while any other game will be tasks. Tasks are not menial, but you've seen them before. Kill X amount of things. Now, it's not any other game where it says kill 12 rats. It says, hey, get to 100. Now, that's a little different. In Wildstar, the challenge is how you want to you grind that task out or that world story out is how hard you want to go at it. You can kill things one at a time and watch that XP bar go... 10%, 12%, 15% to 100. Take on bit, for groups of three or more. You're going to start seeing that thing rise from 20, 25, 40, 45, 60. You, you'll, if, you also have to realize that there are also primes as well, which yes. also equal more. So, so you're going to see someone running around in zone chat going, hey, what's that big glowing red thing? Hey, why is that big glowing red thing hitting me really hard? Hey, why isn't there a number next to that big glowing red thing? Hey, why the fuck am I dead after taking three hits in that big glowing red thing? That guy's is a prime. That is not a standard boss, or not a standard mob in, in any other game. That's like a kind of mini boss in his own. In Wildstar, they're a fact of life. Some classes can do it better than others, but a prime is going to give you a bunch of experience. It's going to give you a bunch of progress on that bar, and it's going to be a lot of fun to take down. So how do you suggest going at primes? Um, talking to people. Yep, with other people, absolutely. And th that is twofold awesome, because one... It lets you kill a fun mob to kill. And two, it lets you meet cool people. 
because really the best way to bond with somebody in an MMO is almost dying with them. And <laughs> if you're in a level appropriate zone and it's you and one other person, there's a chance you might die. Um, have heals on your bar. Yes. Because you have eight skills instead of 15, 20, 30 skills, you have to be a little more conscious about how you're going to approach the situation. If, if you have a class that has cooldowns for extra armor, think about that before you get into a fight with a prom or prime or a lot of extra adds. If you're in a very ad-heavy area, maybe if you have a healing class, do a heal over time on you. It's The cool part about the, the LAS limited action system, though you have eight abilities, you can change them on the fly to suit your style. Kind of like how we were saying all the classes have different ways of playing you can find your own way of successfully changing it. Like I myself, as a spell singer, I never have survival items when I'm PvP da danger. I'm either 100 or I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like that. Some people like to have to make like the ability to constantly chain pool. So they'll add like cooldowns. They'll add utility on it. So play to your own playstyle. See what works for you when you're taking on those primes or taking on those quests. Make sure the zone stories come first. Make sure the the what's it called the the world story comes first as well. And if you see a, a floating, glowing, ghostly girl, say hi. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. So there's one more major thing we're going to talk about for the 50s, uh, because obviously you're going to spend most of your time there. And so people also ask, I just rolled the new 50. Uh, what the fuck do I do? I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I can't... I, what? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Make your bed, Krug. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> when you're at 50 in Wildstar, it used to be kind of cut and dry. You go into Crimson Badlands, you try to do attunement, and that's it. Well, guys, if you're listening to this now, next week, or August, September, October, a lot's changed. You're no longer stuck to one daily zone. You're stuck to literally the 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 weight of choice. I think what is the, it's the, the, the challenge of choice. Where do we start? Where do we go? So we're going to give you our opinions of what's a good way to make the most out of being 50. Uh, I also wanted to point out, I sent a link in chat, but uh, there's also uh, a guide that um, Wildstar Core put together that is a guide to once you hit 50, what's, what's to do? Literally, now what <laughs> is is what it's called? Level 50, now what? Updated. And the burden of choice can cripple a lot of people when they're doing their at 50 and they go, what the fuck do I do now? Everyone's kind of running around with their heads cut off. I don't understand this. Well, here's our opinion on it. So... so it depends on what you want to do. Do you enjoy playing PvP? Do you enjoy uh, doing quests and doing solo content? Do you enjoy doing group content? And honestly, dependent on that... And housing? And, and, well, and ho housing, I mean, I don't even need to bring up housing. But honestly, it's all dependent on what kind of content you like to play. And based off of what content you like to play... Continue playing that content. <laughs> I mean, if you enjoy PvP, uh, there is get, go through battlegrounds, do raided battlegrounds, go to arenas, do uh, war plots. I mean, do there, it all. There's a ton there, and just keep doing that. Do what you enjoy. If you're not, if you're doing something and you don't enjoy it, you should stop because it hurts. But we're gonna give you some direction. So if you want to go get the best gear possible, the only way to get that is raids. So your priority should be acquiring Elder Gems. They are a new currency that replaces your XP bar. Here's what's going to happen. Want to get into a raid? Get something called the Genesis Key. It'll take you about a week if you do casual grinding to get enough Elder Gems, 140 to get that. Now, if you want to figure out the best way to min-max your character, or one way to really min-max your character and have fun with it, uh, and, and be grind and be competitive, and hoo -yah! get that Genesis Key, get started on your attunement. Focus on getting your amp points and your ability points next I, I do want to preface this if you want to do this content again if you don't want to raid you there's don't other ways of going about the end game yeah there, you don't have to raid you don't have to do attunement you can literally just do everything except for that piece of content if you don't like it if you want the best piece of gear then you you still don't have to do that there are tons and tons of different ways sorry i yeah. just wanted to preface it yeah and then finish off by getting your action sets because that'll give you more sets to go into. You can have a PvP set, PvE set, the uh, PvE healing, and then your secondary, whatnot, whatever everything you want. That's to make yourself competitive and maxed out so you can just go and do whatever the hell you want. Your Elder Gems are pretty much a currency as a thank you. So you're going to keep leveling. Here you go. Uh, if you are focusing on your reputation, you're going to have to go through zones. And, and contracts. And contracts. And contracts. Pick up your goddamn contracts. At 50, they're kind of like PvE and PvP bounties. They're special challenges that make the game a little bit harder for you because you have to go out of your way to do them. 
Now, people always say, where do I go first? Uh, do Should I just go hang out in, in, in Starcom Base and just sit there for the next few months? No. What I've learned personally, constantly grinding out all these dailies, because I am a masochist, there's a, there's a way you can get through that you can kind of knock them out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so the zones currently in the game, as of the 31st of May, are Northern Wastes, uh, Blighthaven, Defile, Starcom Basin, Crimson Battlelands, and whatnot. The, a good order to constantly get the most out of your reputation grinding and money, if you don't talk about ship hands, which you will in a little bit, tackle Northern Wastes first because it's the smallest. You can get a lot of those reputation quests or daily quests out of the way real quick. I've done them in as little as 25 minutes. Go to Crimson Battlelands. It's empty. It's large, it takes forever, so you, you want to get that out of your way. Just make that a priority. Northern Waste just fast. Crimson Battlelands is a fucking troll. It's just a tr <laughs> it's a slodge. Make it a priority. Get it out of the goddamn way. <laughs> Same thing true. with Champions of the Defile and Guardians of the Grove. There are a lot of 20-man stuff going on, a lot of 5-man stuff going on, so if it's downtime, they should not be a priority. You're going to be sitting there going, I can't finish Gargantuan, I can't finish Scorch Wing, I can't, well, no one says that anymore. I can't finish Defile. So, you can get those out of the way later on. Focus on daily northern ways, get that up done, to get, then get her in the Battlelands. Don't worry about the new zones yet. You're always going to be in the new zones. Sarcom Basin being the newest one. Keep that last on your priority. Because you'll always be there, you'll always be working on that, on that reputation, you'll always be working for those items. So you're, it doesn't matter, you're just going to be there. If you want to get cash in this game, number one and number two, ship hands and contracts. Hands down, ship hands are solo and small man group content. You can knock them out in 20, 30 minutes. Ton of cash. Just, just do them. Do them. They're fun. They're crazy. They're unique. Contracts, you can also do several of them at the same time. Then make sure you focus on your dailies, and then do dungeons and everything else. And if you're doing zone priority, if you just want to go, where's the cool zones? Where do I go first? Always go to the newest zone, and then make your way down from there. To be honest, from there, it's, it's a choice. So the new zones always first. You want to check out the new, cool new content with tons of people. And then from there, just... The other thing else, Crimson Battlelands and Guardians of the Grove, <laughs> do them last. Okay, what's, why, what are you doing, Krug? Are you fighting back? Yes. I'm making my bed worse. <laughs> <laughs> bed of betrayal. <laughs> bed of betrayal. <laughs> Promissory notes from the contracts, turn those in, it'll help your rep grind. Keep those in mind as well. So just little things. Uh, we're going to end this uh, soon, in about 10-15 minutes, as Krug just totally pisses off the entire Twitch chat. Uh, some tips from the community, a few people have also said a few things. Uh, people in Twitch chat said a few things. They're saying, you know, the most annoying part about level 50 is grinding for amp and ability points, says Rulim. So make that a priority, so don't worry about it. No, uh, don't make that a priority because I, you don't need amps anymore. Amps oh yeah, are, no amps, a a uh, ability points you do. Yeah, I was going to say, because uh, in the next patch, uh, you just get them now. So, yeah, oh sorry. So the next major patch, drop six slash the PTR transition patch, they're getting away of all the amp uh, the amp point drops. Yeah, everything will be available to use. You have to have, to have the minimum requisite of amp points. You should throw uh, the bird on there. Yeah. Oh, volunteerism has a great great one, and one we t completely forgot because you're gonna learn it throughout the game. But keep this in mind. Tip: learn to strafe and sprint. Uh, sorry, I, I got a little aggravated because people will sit there and they'll just casually walk their way at telegraphs. This game is fast-paced. It's challenging. Even the easy one, even the easy dungeons will test you. Learn uh, to sprint, learn to dodge. And and, and to to the, what the chat's saying, you don't get your amp points and ability points. You get all of your amps. You no longer have to find or purchase the amps themselves. Yeah. You still have to grind out your amp points. But before, you were also having to grind out... Uh, and get the amps themselves uh i think this is a good time to move on actually because there's we could literally talk okay. f for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks which we probably will uh, yes and so, I, that's a bad idea we're already if, at an hour if, and 45 <laughs> if, if, you're, if you if you want to hear more we'll bring the 101 back more often if you have a question specifically and reddit's not answering it and forms aren't using it send it to stos at qtimes.com Seriously, we will try to answer as many questions as we can, whether it be lore, whether it be attunement, whether it be everything else. Send it to us. Boom. Awesome. In you go. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't going to say anything else. I was going to say... Uh, you wanted us to move on. <laughs> yeah, I was saying move on. This is the end of the show. We have the 101. Almost. Little... We have 15 minutes. No, we're good. Uh, we, we, we can answer questions in the post show. That's the whole 
point of the post show. <sighs> Fine. Anyways, okay, so last point, last point of the day. If you want to get good at Wild Star, you got to make your damn bed. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone that showed up in the live stream. Um, all 107 of you. Thank you very, very, very much. And thank you for following. Uh, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. We, we do have something we need to tell, though. Okay, go for it. So, if you had followed us the last few months, we were giving, last month or two, we were giving away codes for the game that have oh, items. Wait items for the Snarfer Lynx mount or the Glitter Kitty Ever Hoverboard or the Marauder costume. We gave away three of the four codes. We still have one code left. Unfortunately, the person who won the fourth code never replied back. We gave them ample time. We told them on the podcast. We told them on the live stream. Uh, dude or ma'am, I'm sorry. We gave you two additional... We gave you an initial two weeks. I swear to go if you show code. the actual code on stream, I'd be so mad at you. Code no, it's is full, in it's the box. It's still okay, in the I'm box. just making sure. Just making so, sure. Uh, hey, Indigo, go ahead and wave that thing around the, the, the camera again. Because if you're listening to this right now, there's a chance you can win that co that box right there. The code this inside that box can be yours. Yes. No or, joke. Or the box, if it. you actually want the box, we'll actually ship or, it to you. Yeah, if uh, you want the box, we'll do it. And uh, Krug is going to put together that in the next day or so and send that out. And we will do another giveaway like we did in the past. Um, it is an NA code. Yeah, it's, it's an NA code. It is an NA, an NA code. code. So if you are, uh, you know, Ox HD or, you know, Shack Mr. Shackleberry and want to play with uh, the North Americans, you can still win this. Uh, but, uh, yes, please, please. And remember, if you haven't bought, if you haven't got the game and you aren't currently playing, Please, please, please get this because you get so much more with it. You get so much more. If you win that box, come the free-to-play transition, you will have a little extra loyalty points in yeah. your system. We're okay. So if you want, if you want to get that code, we're not gonna give away now. No. Chat, you're the funniest. We, we totally cock blocked that. you guys. It's just I can't st I can't be a part of this podcast because I'm just reading our chat. I love our chat. <laughs> this is it. our community and it's growing and I love it. <laughs> So if you want that code, here's what's going to happen. We're going to give out our... If you've been looking at our live stream, we have three Twitter handles next to our names. Krug is at Strange Tales, Doc is at DocQT, and Indigo is at Indigo Jones QT. We are going to post on our Twitters the link to get that code probably in the next 24 to 48 hours. 24. But by the time you hear the audio podcast come up, there'll be links to win that code. And it will go on until the very next show. So S2S episode 48, that gets cut off and someone is going to win that code. Dead fucking serious. So keep an eye out. Twitter.com underscore QTimes. Any of our tags on the live stream, that's our Twitters. You'll see us. Oh, trust me. I will be posting that shit. Tell your <laughs> friends. Um, and so on that, uh, I'm Indigo. That's Krug, who's not paying attention. Yep. I'm Krug. <laughs> and I'm Doc. For everyone who's... This is your first chance meeting us. Uh, we are Strange Tales from Outer Space. We are a Wild Star podcast. We are streaming live every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific. The audio podcast goes up typically on Tuesdays. And we're out of here for this week on the audio. Bye.